Kia ora Year 12. In this video I'm going to do questions 4 and 5 from the school exam last week. Um, so these came from the March 2018 Pure 3 paper, paper 32. Now the first question is quite unusual and you don't find it too often, um, but I really liked this question which is why I popped it in there. And it's one that makes us look at taking logs of both sides and then working with linear equations when the variables are log of y and log of x. So the first thing we've got to do is to read the question. And we've got x and y and they satisfy this equation and n and a are constants and then we're given two points on that curve and then we have to explain why we get a straight line when we graph log y against log x and we really do need to explain that and use you know look at the equation that we've got and talk about why it's linear so that's two marks and then we've got four marks to figure out the values of n and a now i'm going to do that and i suspect it's not the most elegant of ways but this is kind of just how, how I figured it out. And to use the second part of the question, the mistake that a number of you made is that you tried to do it from up here. You can do that, but given that you've gone to the work of taking logs and figuring out how you get a straight line, that's, I think, the best way to figure out the values of n and a. So let's start by seeing what our starting point is. We've got y to the power of n is a x cubed. So step one is to take natural logs on both sides. And it's worth doing that slowly because quite a few of you made a mistake in what you did with the log on this side. So we get n times the natural log of y. And then here we get the natural log of a plus the natural log of x cubed, which is the log of a plus 3 log of x. Now what we're trying to get to here is an equation that is roughly in the form y equals mx plus c, but instead of y and x we're going to have log y and log of x. So we're not quite there yet. I'm going to divide both sides through by n, and that will give me log of y is equal to, so reordering I get 3 over n log x plus 1 over n log a. And now we can say pretty straightforwardly that this is like y and this is like m times x plus c but i don't think that I, i'm not sure that that would be enough so we're going to just say um, instead that when we've got this equation so so our new equation is linear in the variables log x and log of y since n and a are constants, something like that. Okay, so that's the first two marks done. Now what we've got to do now is take these two points on the curve and figure out n and a. Now to do this, I started off by saying, well, what were our points? Well, we had x and y. We had 1.2 and 2.51. And then for y, we had 2.58 and 9.49. So I started off straight away by going, what's log of x and what's log of y? And I got these values. So we got 0 0.1823 here and 0 0.9478 here, 0 0.9203 here, and 2.2502. And if you think about what we're trying to do now, um, we've got one point here and we've got one point here. So m in this case is going to equal, um, so m is equal to this value here of 3 over n. Sorry, I'll just move my screen around. So m is 3 over n, and that's my rise over my run. So it's going to be 2.2502 minus 0.9478 divided by what's in the bottom line. So 0 0.9203 minus 0 0.1823. So that gives me 3 over n is equal to, well, when I work all of this out, I get 1.7649. So n is equal to, what have we got, n is equal to 3 over that, n is equal to 1.699785, so that's looking pretty good, it looks like a nice round 1.70 to 2dp. Then the next thing I've got to do is to figure out what a is, and what can we say there, well we can substitute one of the points in, right? So that was what I did next, is I substituted a value into here. We've got 3 over n, um, and we've got a point for this, and then we can get this. So 2.2502 is equal to 1.7649 times 0 0.9203. So that's my log y value 
that's my 3 over n value from the start of the calculation before, and that's my log x value, and then I've got plus 1 over n, so 1 over 1.7 times log a. Um, chugging all of that through, so it's not too bad, because this is worth 4 marks, right? So 1.64242 plus 0.5882 log a, all of that gives me log a is equal to 1.064, so we get A is equal to 2.90 to 2dp. So I think conceptually it's not too bad a question, but there is a bit of mucky working in there, and I'm sure I, I can remember marking and thinking a couple of you had better ways to do that, but that seemed to work out fine for me. Um, right, okay, on to question five. So question five was actually really well done, um, except the last bit people didn't take too far. So I'm guessing if you've got this next one completely right, feel free to stop watching, obviously. First thing we had to do was to differentiate both sides and then um, do a little bit of a proof. So this was worth five marks, but this felt like a pretty easy five marker to me. We're just working with dy by dx, not the second derivative. So we're going to start off by differentiating this and differentiating this and then using the chain rule. So dx by dt, so x is 2t plus sine of 2t, and y is equal to 1 minus cos of 2t. So dx by dt is equal to 2 plus 2 cos of 2t, and dy by dt is equal to, right, well cosine differentiates to negative sine, so this is going to be positive sine, so it's sine of 2t, just a sec. That's not written right, right, sorry. y is equal to 1 minus 2 cos 2t. So here dy by dt is equal to 4 sine 2t. And that means that dy by dx, which is equal to dy by dt times dt by dx, is going to give me sine of 4 sine of 2t over 2 plus 2 cosine of 2t. And we had to prove that this was equal to 2 tan t, and you can see double angles screaming at you hopefully in there, so first getting rid of the 2, um, we've got 2 sine 2t over 1 plus cosine of 2t, um, as I said this question was really well done, so that's equal to 4 sine of t, cosine of t, and here I'm going to choose the double angle where I'm going to undo the plus 1, so it's going to be 1 plus 2 cos squared t, minus 1. So all up that gives me 2 sine t cos t over cos squared t, which gives me 2 sine t cos t, which is 2 tan t as required. Right, so that's the first part, and that's dy by dx, which obviously is going to give me the gradient of the tangent, and we need to now find the x-coordinate, only the x-coordinate, um, of the point on the curve where the gradient of the normal is 2. So, what have I got? Well, I've got normal gradient is going to equal negative 1 over 2 tan t, and that equals 2. That gives me negative 1 quarter is equal to tan t. And I've got 0 is less than, what have I got for my values? Where are we? Oh, sorry. t is between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. Right, so let's just sketch it and see what we've got. We're just working with that bit of the curve, so that means we're just looking for this one value of t. So t is equal to tan inverse of negative one quarter, which gives me negative 2.24498. Now a few of you stopped there, which was unfortunate, um, because we needed to find the x coordinate, and x is equal to 2t plus sine of 2t, so x is equal to 2 times this, plus sign of, what was it, negative 0.48996, and that gave me negative 0 0.961. Okay, and that's going to three significant figures. Right, um, that's all for this video. I will keep on chugging through the rest of the paper tonight. Um, 
but um, yeah, this question was definitely one place in the curriculum where you guys have done a, a pretty good job with revising. So well done.